Well, this is John Black, super chemist. I'll show you the simplest and easiest way to get methanol. Uh, I got here what's called heat gas line antifreeze and water remover. Um, you can get that at any any uh, auto store. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I poured it into this beaker here. I'm going to throw some magnesium sulfate in there just to see if it's dry or not. I'm going to stir it up and then uh, let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes. Make sure there's no water in there. And then we'll go to the distillation. Here's my setup. You got your magnetic stirrer. There's your stuff. I didn't filter it. I, so there's bits of particles of the Epsom salt in there, but uh, it's no big deal. Uh, I got a fractional column all the way up there. Comes back down. And I don't have the flask in there, but it'll come out right here. So let's start it up. All right, this was almost a perfect distillation. Um, I think it boils at uh, 64.7 methanol. I had the temperature between 64.2 and 65 degrees, which is a 0.8 degree difference. And uh, the entire time, I mean, it, it did not fluctuate at all. First 10 milliliters I threw away because I was trying to adjust it perfectly, but even then it, it was really easy to adjust. Um, and, uh, you'll see I'm putting some fiber board in there right now. That's like insulation board. That's because I got heat on the left. I got cold on the right. And I don't want to keep putting ice into the, into the condenser. This helps save on ice. <clears throat> um, anyways, like I said, uh, it boils at 64.7. I boiled it between 64.2 and 65. That's an excellent, excellent, uh, thing to do. Um, the last 10 milliliters, I did boil it up so that it, you know, and I was heating uh, everything with the water. So you know the water isn't going to go above 100 degrees. And I boiled that last 10 milliliters out of there really easy. I mean, I had a big Vigorex column, so I couldn't get it all out of there, obviously. But uh, when the, there's just a little bit there, right, it, it was really uh, fluid. Um, where xylene is more of a, you know, it's uh, more viscous, uh, more like an oil, and uh, it didn't act like that, because I, some of the MSDSs that were old, which was basically the only ones I could find, um, they all said that uh, there was xylene in it, and uh, I don't think there's any xylene, it seems like it's almost 99.9% .9 methanol, um, there might be some inhibitors they put in there, that are high boiling, and that's what was left over in the last 10 milliliters. But uh, I'd say you pretty much have have a good uh, good pure product there when you're done, okay? Um, because uh, recent MSDSs do say it's 100% methanol. I, I don't buy that, though. I'm sure they put some inhibitors in there. Um, like I said, I took it really slow because I did want to see how pure it was. Um, and as for the rest of the product, um, you'll see it coming up. I'll show you. There'll be just a little bit of crap there. See there? And that was after it cooled down. So all that came, I actually boiled that all away, but it came back down after it, it got cold. Uh, there's another 10 milliliters. The first 10 that came off, I have it in a separate little cup there. I'm just going to toss it away or whatever, or use it as a solvent. And then there's my product. And I will um, put that in the container here soon. Okay, as you can see, I relabeled the uh, bottle. I put methanol one third liter. Um, keep in mind, if you're going to store this for any length of time, I'd put some molecular sieves in there to keep it nice and dry. Now you got some nice, cheap, uh, pure methanol. Anyways, keep in mind, science is great.